Hello and welcome to News Now. A federal high court in the Nigerian capital of Abuja has granted bail to the former national chairman of the ruling People's Democratic, former ruling People's Democratic Party, Haliru Bello, and his son Abba Bello, to the tune of 600 million naira. The judge ordered that both men provide the sum of 300 million naira along with two sureties. Now, the judge also said that uh, the first surety must be a civil servant, not below level 12, while the second must have properties in Abuja worth 300 million naira. Bello is one of many high-profile personalities charged by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission for allegedly receiving parts of the arms funds, allegedly diverted by a former national security advisor, Sambo Dasuki. He is facing a four-count charge of money laundering brought against him by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. He was accused of receiving the sum of 300 million naira from the immediate past national security advisor, that's Sambo Dasuki, for political campaigns. The court adjourned till February 16 for commencement of trial. Apart from the fact that the conditions are a little uh, onerous, stringent, well, we'll see whether they are attainable, whether they are fulfillable. I want to jump the guns here. Let's see how uh, the, the, the defendants, you know, their efforts at uh, trying to meet uh, the conditions. If they are unable to fulfill the conditions, of course, we may have we may have no choice than to go back to court to ask for variation. Now, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission on Wednesday night arrested a former military governor of Kaduna State and chieftain of the ruling All Progressives Congress, Lawal Jafaru Issa. Issa is the first member of the APC to be arrested by the EFCC since the beginning of a sweeping probe into the alleged diversion of $2.1 billion meant for arms purchase by officials of the immediate past administration. Before his arrest on Wednesday, Issa, a retired brigadier general, was invited last week to appear before the Anti-Graph Commission to clear the air on some questionable receipts from the former NSA. Rather than honoring the invitation, sources said Issa wrote a letter to the EFCC through his lawyer seeking a postponement of his appearance date on the grounds of death of a relative. Apparently not satisfied with his excuse, the EFCC proceeded to arrest him. Meanwhile, the former chairman of Da Communications, that's uh, owners of AIT High Chief Raymond Dokpesi, has denied his involvement in the $2.1 billion, $2 billion arms deal scandal, despite being charged by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. Speaking at a ceremony organized by the PDP Youth Vanguard in Abuja, Dokpesi, who is accused of receiving 2.1 billion naira from the office of the former national security advisor said the current government was using its powers to destroy the former ruling pdp i wish to emphasize that the current ruling party is making efforts to impede our journey to political maturity through the manipulation of the federal system to serve purely partisan interests our party, the PDP, is indeed experiencing a massive persecution, political repressal and vendetta of the kind never before seen on our shores and targeted at the leadership, membership, and indeed sympathizers of the party by the APC government of the day. I speak with regards to the several matters before the law courts of our country concerning PDP members, and especially my humble self, on charges filed against us by the federal government, and will crave your indulgence not to make any comments, as doing so will be sub to this. However, let me call on all members of the PDP nationwide, especially you members of the Youth Vanguard, to remain firmly resolute and stand behind the leadership of the party at all levels in our bid to ensure that the party gets fair hearing and judgments in all the cases at the various elections. <laughs> the provisions of Section 287 of our Constitution, of our national Constitution, are very clear on the obedience of court orders by all arms of government. Yes. Having said so, I must hasten to assure you that there is nothing like the much fronted 2.1 billion USD dollars arms gate. It does not exist. 
Mm. It's a figment of the imagination of the current administration. It is an attempt to disseminate, to misinform, to destroy the very fabric of the PDP. And you must stand, each and every one of you, for the People's Democratic Party. Yes. Former chairman of uh, DA Communications, owner of uh, Ray Power and, of course, AIT television station. He was actually conferred with, a, with an award now by the PDP National Youth Vanguard. Now, still on the PDP National Youth Vanguard, the group has expressed its disapproval at the recent arrest of PDP National Publicity Secretary Olisa Metru by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. The national coordinator of the group, Ibrahim Aboki, at a solidarity rally to the PDP National Secretariat in Abuja said PDP leaders have been victimized by the current government, accusing the Buhari government of waging a selective war on corruption. You can't date us. No. We are not criminals. No. We are not criminals. No. We help Nigeria. No. We can we, we in part we self democracy. No. We BDP make democracy state today. No. So Release only Simetu now. No. We say no to continue arresting only PDP numbers. Yes. Yes. They must be justice. Yes. They must arrest everybody. Yes. You don't only PDP. Yes. You may, we say no to political damages. Yes. Now, as part of its bids to help Nigeria successfully win the war against terrorism, the United States government has officially handed over 21 mine resistant armored protected vehicles to. Uh, the Nigerian military, now I should say the vehicles are used. Now the vehicles are presented by a representative of the U.S. government, Patrick Doyle, on Thursday in Lagos. Doyle said the vehicles were part of the measures the U.S. had decided to take to fulfill its commitment to Nigeria and its West African neighbors to curb the Boko Haram menace. He added that most of the vehicles were in good shape but will need minor work. Nigeria's Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, has emphasized on the need for broadcast organizations to create more awareness campaigns on the war against terrorism through their programs. Speaking at a meeting with members of the Broadcasting Organization of Nigeria, born in Abuja, the minister asked the body to promote the efforts of the military in the Northeast, especially now that they have succeeded in disintegrating the strongholds of Boko Haram in the area. He also commended some members of Bonn for their efforts so far, but appeals to all members to be part of the campaign to end the insurgency. The federal government believes that the military has succeeded in massively degrading the capacity of the Boko Haram terrorists to carry out the kind of attacks they used to launch in the past like that of the police headquarters in Abuja, on the UN complex also in Abuja, and the military barracks. However, we also know that the terrorists who have been routed from their strongholds have now resorted to attacking some targets, that is, highly vulnerable places like markets, motor parks, mosques, churches, entertainment centers and schools killing innocent people. That is why we believe that as a government we must now sensitize our people so that they can be more security conscious and they have to end the spread of suicide bombings that are the best vestiges, that are the last vestiges of a failing insurgency. In this regard, we need all the leaders to join hands together with us. We need all hands on deck, and we need a very important organization like yours, the Broadcasting Organization of Nigeria, to assist us in creating awareness among our people. Already, some of your members, like the NTA, the FRC, and Paul, have taken up the government and are now running awareness campaign messages on their stations. Since December, these stations are dedicated money slots, some in prime time, to air these campaign messages in different languages. Also, the residents of Nigeria have been using this SMS platform to send security awareness messages to Nigerians. Let me use this opportunity to commend these media organizations for a job well done. And also, to all them not to relate 
until all our citizens are safe and secure. The continued survival of our nation is the business of all of us. It is only when our nation survives that we can profit in our different enterprises. I think it's a fundamental uh, issue. And I believe, as I said, well, jokingly earlier, that both as an organization will be committed to providing substantial support for the federal government. I think also, though, that information dissemination costs so money. Therefore, uh, that interest also ought to be looked at uh, so that uh, the interest of both sides is firmly uh, dealt with. Now, Nobel laureate Professor Walisha Inka has responded to claims by the River State government that its former governor, Rotimi Amechi, spent 82 million naira to organize a dinner in his honor. Earlier this week, the River State Commissioner for Information, Austin Tam George, said the state government would demand a refund of the 82 million naira spent on the dinner if it discovers that the Nobel laureate received part of the funds in cash. However, Shoinka in a statement insisted he was not bothered by the accusation, saying that the claims of the River State government were warnings he recounted in his recent publication, The Republic of Liars. Chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, Ibrahim Magu, has uh, warned that his commission will not relax but continue to arrest more corrupt Nigerians at his six to eradicate the menace of corruption. Since assuming office, Magu has been one of the driving forces in President Buhari's anti-corruption campaign, arresting several influential Nigerians who have been indicted by the investigations carried out by the commission. Speaking at a forum with online and broadcast media managers, Magu said that he would ensure he fulfills his oath of office by prioritizing the mandate which he was appointed to fulfill. He assured that he was determined to work in accordance with the mandate of the President, Muhammad Buhari, President Muhammad Buhari to send out a message to every citizen that no one is above the law. A group known as the Civil Society for HIV and AIDS in Nigeria has urged President Muhammad Buhari to fully mobilize local resources through public-private partnerships so as to ensure there is a fully functional health system for primary to secondary and tertiary levels devoid of corruption with focus on manufacturing antiretroviral drugs locally to minimize the huge amount of resources spent on international procurement of the drugs. Speaking at a press conference in Abuja, chairman of the group Remy Obinatu said uh, the Nigerian government and its allied agencies seem to be doing nothing following the withdrawal of support by international donors, leading to introduction of huge user fees ranging from purchase of hospital cards to baseline and routine chemistry test charges with abysmal reduction in quality of services provided by people living for people actually living with HIV AIDS. Also speaking at the event, Victor Olaure from the network of people living with HIV and AIDS in Nigeria decried the fact that different facilities across the country have shifted the burden of donor fatigue and lack of government support to patients by introducing unnecessary charges. The treatment facilities have, in response to this withdrawal of support, introduced huge uh, user fees ranging from purchase of hospital cards to baseline and routine chemistry tests, with abysmal reduction in the quantity, quality of services provided to PLHIVs in the facilities. It will also be very important to state that from studies, 80% of people living with HIV AIDS are poor and cannot afford to provide nutritional support to either themselves or their households, in order to talk about being able to pay for these user fees that are charged at the treatment facilities. Many young persons who are unemployed and living with the virus are also affected by the recent development. Many positive women who have either lost their husbands to the disease or been driven away from their matrimonial homes and even many that are still married cannot afford the user fees. We have also not forgotten the many Nigerian children who are also HIV positive, who are also affected by these user fees. The lockdown effect of all these is that many of the PLHs in the country have started to default from adherence to their drugs 
by missing their routine appointments in the treatment facilities. This will definitely reverse the achievements of the national response in no distant time. There's an opportunity, an opportunity that the national response may receive attention of the anti-corruption and people-oriented agenda of Mr. President to fully mobilize local resources through public-private partnership. Nigeria must move in the direction of also ensuring a fully functional health system from primary to secondary and tertiary, devoid of corruption and of manufacturing antiretroviral drugs locally to minimize the large amounts of resources spent on international procurement of the drugs. In most of the facilities now, before you do your drug pickup, you have to pay the likes for like 1,000 Naira, 1,000 Naira for drugs, and all of these have been budgeted for, the drugs have been paid for by the international community. So we don't know why they are charging the poor Nigerians living with HIV and AIDS this kind of fee. Some people are just there to defraud the patient's community. And we believe that the president, Muhammad Buhari, will be watching this, but he will not keep quiet. They want us to use this opportunity. We want Nigerian government to intervene. Each month, you come to do your drug pickup, you pay about 1,000 Naira. When you come to do consultation, you pay a minimum of 3,000 Naira. You pay 1,000 Naira each month for bleeding. This is uncalled for. These doctors have their salary budgeted for by the government. And these drugs are being budgeted for by the international communities. Why should the patient be the ones that will be paying for consultation to see a doctor if we are going to, as if we are going to a private hospital? We are using this medium to appeal to, God, to the government through the Minister of Health, Professor Isaac Adewale, to use his good office to ensure that there is an end to this satanic development in the health response. Nigerian cannot end aid by 2030 if poor Nigerians infected with HIV do not have access to free treatment, care and support services in the country. Well, we'll take a short break and uh, news now. We'll be right back. Hello, you're welcome. You're watching the Funny White Man Show, which is the biggest, the brightest, and the most entertaining show in Africa. Funny you White Man. Funny for for White Man. Funny White Man. For the white man. Yes. But this way you talk, yes. too much. Yes. Give me 5,000 man that you. <laughs> it's too much. So you get to like, make sure you move along the street. Ah, yeah, make sure like I'm going girl. You know, my own people. Ah, actually. Yeah. yeah, fine. It's fun. I enjoy it. And I'm one of those very few. I'm, I'm forever you. taking it personal. Very good. I will listen to 160 million Nigerians are corrupt. How? I'm looking for you. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's a growth and this is the time to build business and know the pitfalls and know what to do and what not to do. But there are months where you get business and months... You know how we do? How we tell you? <laughs> we did the way you did it. <laughs> 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 Hello, you welcome. you watching Trending Matters on the Funny White Man Show. Of course, they will bring you trending issues just to entertain and tickle your fancy. Welcome back. Now, the Naira weakened further against the United States dollar on the parallel market in spite of the sale of the greenback to Bureau of the Change operators by the Central Bank of Nigeria. Specifically, the nation's currency was sold at about 272 Naira to a dollar at some parallel market points in Lagos. Now, President Mohamed Buhari last week reiterated his opposition to the devaluation of the nation's currency, saying he was yet to be convinced on its merits. Speaking on his first media chart in Abuja since assuming office, he stressed the need to provide foreign exchange to productive sectors so as to reflate the economy, insisting that the drop in crude oil prices has, aggrav has aggravated the challenge faced by the Nigerian economy. Senate President Bukola Saraki has asked the Central Bank of Nigeria to review the country's foreign policy. Foreign currency policy as uh, Nigerian economic fortunes continue to dwindle. Speaking at a meeting with the managing director of the International Monetary Fund, IMF, Christian Lagarde, Saraki called on the Apex Bank to introduce a more flex flexible foreign exchange regime and reduce the present restrictions on the autonomous market, which does not allow businessmen to bring in foreign exchange or utilize what they have in their account. 
The Senate President had equally conversed a similar view at a private meeting with the CBN Governor Godwin Emefiele, during which he implored him to consider the effects of the present forex regime on small businesses, which uh, are dying following evaporating crude oil revenue. Now, oil prices tumbled over 5% to levels not seen since the early 2000s on Thursday as a sliding Chinese yuan and a second emergency halt in China stock trading this week left Asian markets in turmoil. Mirroring the weakness across financial markets, the global benchmark Brent crude fell over 5% and around uh, $2 per barrel to a low of $32.16 a barrel, now a level not seen since April 2004, before edging back to $32.23 a barrel in the early hours of Thursday. The oil price crash comes on the back of near-record output from producers such as the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC, Russia and North America, which has left storage tanks brimming with unneeded supplies. The price plunge is causing countries that rely heavily on oil export revenues economic pain. The premium for Saudi five-year credit default swaps, uh, a bankruptcy insurance, has more than tripled since late 2015 to over $180. At least 47 people have been killed by a truck bomb targeting a police training center in the western Libyan city of Zlinten, reports say. Media in Libya said the attack struck the Al Jafal training camp, which had been a military base during the rule of ousted Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi. Libya has been hit by instability since its overthrow in 2011, and there's concern Islamic State militants are gaining a foothold there. The country has been run by two governments, only one of which is recognized by the international community. To sports now, the Super Eagles of Nigeria maintains their 66th position in the latest FIFA World Cup World Ranking, mainly due to inactivity in the past month. The Eagles, who had dropped seven places in their previous ranking, also maintained their 14th position in the African chart as Cote d'Ivoire and Algeria continue to lead an unchanged African top five. Nigeria would be hoping for better fortunes in the next edition of the rankings as the country's B team prepares to compete in the third edition of the African Nations Championships in Rwanda. Meanwhile, Belgium, I should say, remained the world's best team, clinging on to the number one sport ahead of Argentina and Germany, respectively. Nigeria's federal capital of Abuja is set to host uh, the 2015 edition of the Glow Calf Awards. There are six Nigerians among those up for awards, including Vic Victoria's head coach of the Nigerian under-17 national team, Emmanuel Amonike, who was nominated for the Coach of the Year Award. He was nominated alongside five other Nigerians in Kelechi Mwakali and Victor Simen, who were both nominated for Youth Player of the Year Award. Ngozi Ebere, who was nominated in the Women Player of the Year Award category, and Azubike Okechuku and Etebo Ogenekaro, who were both nominated in Most Promising uh, talent award category as Cap reveals the various nominees for the 2015 awards. Meanwhile, four-time African footballer of the year Yaya Touré is favorite to pick the top award for a record fifth time in a row. He was nominated alongside Gabon's Pierre-Emerick Aboumayang and Ghana's Andre Ayou. The International uh, All Athletics Federation Ethics Committee has banned three of its senior officials for life for blackmailing athletes and covering up positive drug tests. One of the senior officials given the life ban is the son of the former president of the IWAF, Papa Masata Diak, whose father, Lamin Diak, is currently being investigated by French authorities for allegedly covering up doping offenses during his time as IWAF president. The other two officials who have been banned are the former head of Russian athletics, Valentin Bala Balanikev, and the former Russian head coach, As Alexei, I should say, Melnikov. A statement from the Ethics Committee confirmed the bans, along with an additional five-year ban handed out to former IWAF anti-doping director Gabriel Dole. Well, that's it in news now. For now, we thank you very much for watching. Continue to stay tuned to TV360.